All right, in this video, I wanna give you guys my best recommendations for maximizing resistance bands alongside free weights in a very minimalist setup. Because my assumption is for many people who are really into resistance bands, it's either out of maybe some general interest, but a lot of times it's out of necessity. They don't wanna invest in big expensive squat racks, have to deal with Olympic style plates and big seven foot barbells. They want something very simple and compact. So that's what I'm gonna more or less recommend for you guys here. At the end, I'll give you guys some of my brief little thoughts of how I put this together in a kind of a program, so to speak, if I I had a setup that I'm gonna be describing here for you. There, of course, are affiliate links and some promo codes help support me in the channel. But a lot of this stuff here you can find dirt cheap or used on, say, like the Marketplace or Craigslist. Starting off with my first recommendation, which is a very basic old school standard bar, what it goes by, or AKA pig iron bar. I think these are actually coming back in popularity, but these are the ones that use the one inch plates. But I do think the new resistance band market really is the new era of people that are interested into this. In fact, I know a lot of you guys who are into resistance bands are interested or do have one inch collars based on the recommendations I've heard or suggestions for people to make hooks that fit on one inch collars. And I'll get to that here in a second. But why I recommend this and why this has traditionally been used in say home fitness is because it is much more lightweight and compact compared to an Olympic style barbell. Everything else is a lot more inexpensive and of course smaller. A bar like this can really help complement some of those other just general movement patterns we do, such as legs, squatting, lunging, some hinging patterns, of course, works great for barbell curls, overhead presses, just a great little barbell that, of course, in conjunction now with resistance bands, with some of the new stuff we have, further increases the versatility of maximizing something like this. Because, of course, you could go ahead and buy a two-inch or Olympic-style barbell, but the odds are you probably don't want that because you don't want to invest in all the heavy weight plates. That's my assumption. So the benefits then of having something like that is purchasing some sort of hook-based system. Should go without saying, this is pretty much my favorite accessory. It's the one I made out of necessity, the collar hooks. There's a new version now with printed kind of logos on it. I actually don't even have it yet. They just came out of the printer from my uh, business partner, showed it to me. But I'm gonna show you guys these. Also the new ones, the band buds from Vector Athletics. Uh, Max sent me these, so really cool. Quick pros and cons, I mean, these are not made in the USA. That might not matter to you guys. It's flush more on the inside, so it kind of allows the bands to kind of sit out of the way of the weights and then kind of angles them in a little bit more. They fit on perfectly, they feel good. Some of personal preference, but we designed collar hooks to essentially be a little more versatile and small so you can fit in like your pocket and be multi-purpose for inside and also outside of the weight plates. And you guys will see here, I use it even on carabiners. I've used it on machines in the past. There's a lot of things you can actually creatively use this with this thing. Of course, band buds, same kind of deal. Nexus makes theirs. They're also a great affiliate with me. I don't have their new Nexus clips, but those are definitely awesome. I'll link uh, discount code for that if you guys are curious. Vector does make a conversion to one inch collars. The one Max sent me, I tried to, I'm gonna get in touch with them. It just does not fit on my bar. I tried another one inch bar. It just doesn't fit. Might just be a fluke with mine. I'm sure he's gonna address that uh, on the final version that's being shipped out. But the other reason I recommend some sort of a collar is that if you're either on the cheap side or you wanna maximize the bands that you have, Oftentimes, I don't talk with these enough. This is a band set that I have recommended and purchased for people, and I use it honestly very often, is a $10, sometimes even $8 on Amazon, this band set. And if I use a hook-based system, it allows me to really get to a point where I feel like I don't really need to use a heavier band, at least for the exercises I use. And that goes without saying, if you don't have one, I assume a lot of you guys do have it, this is where a foot plate kind of comes in handy because yes, of course, you could stand in the band, I oftentimes do do that, but if you're loading up and stacking bands, this makes it much less cumbersome than if you were to stand on it and do a variety of exercises. Foot plate though, should kind of be a given for a lot of people if you guys are using this. Should have said at the start, I'm talking about non-anchor based systems. That's my personal preference. With that being said though, the next thing I'd recommend is probably some sort of pull up bar if you have the space, if you have, again, a little more of a footprint, possibly more of a budget, although pretty much the same maybe some sort of a squat rack type pull-up that has some pins in here. I only say that, you gotta do it at your own risk. Probably my second favorite band accessory that I use, might not be applicable to this video, it would be one of these pins. I did a whole video on this, one inch pins, so there are some squat racks out there that allow you to do that. I use this thing for a variety of things, but also just for assisted pull-ups and alongside my collar hooks. And that's one of the great things. Most people do not have the problem of loading extra weight on the pull-ups. Some people have a hard time just getting above, say, 10. So a good way of kind of just working through the range of motion and just getting more repetitions and pull-ups is just throwing on some resistance bands. So that works out great. Also, a pull-up bar helps really complement resistance bands because you don't get a whole lot of good vertical pulling 
type exercises. So pull up bar is definitely on there. The next one is definitely up there and probably the best ecosystem in my opinion, even though I don't necessarily have all of it, I have their bench, would be Iron Masters ecosystem. Specifically talking about their dumbbells. And I actually always surprised that people I talk to use resistance bands that do not have pair of adjustable dumbbells. To me, free weights and resistance bands go together like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, if you have a minimal setup, nowadays these adjustable dumbbells are so inexpensive. They're extremely versatile. Uh, and there's so much you can do with them. So while I like quick change ones, the Iron Master quick change ones just take a little more time. Is what's great about them is aside from going up to one of the highest weight increments, and I know a lot of you guys use resistance bands, like to progressively kind of track data and metrics and things like that. You can start small and gradually add weight, but the biggest thing is that it fits on their ecosystem. So you don't necessarily have to buy all these, say external weight plates to say, take advantage of some vertical pulling. So you just buy their adjustable dumbbell set and maybe their bench and in that small footprint, you're actually taking away a lot of weak points that resistance bands, bands have. You're opening up some other exercises and you're not adding a whole lot of extra equipment. Oh, do you have an Iron Master affiliate link down below? Help support me in the channel if you guys are curious about that. The next products that I think are extremely popular and I recommend to most people if you want a pure minimal resistance band type setup is really finding stuff that adequately works the legs. I do not use these as much. That's just not my personal preference. I use a squat harness for a number of other things, but the Vector Athletics belt, I've kind of fallen in favor with it just because I just don't use a lot of heavy resistance band exercises. I just prefer free weights at this point in time. But if you do have a minimal setup, you have bands, you got a foot plate, this makes a lot of logical sense. Squat harness is very much a other new fan favorite. And I'd say alongside their squat wedge, which is also probably the biggest on market, has kind of smooth edges here made for resistance bands. Another really heavy complement to loading up your legs, let's say with a squat belt. Kind of a different type of stimulus. And in some ways I can see people preferring this over the squat belt. There's kind of two different things, but a super versatile product nonetheless. So many things you guys can do with it. Uh, if you did want to say invest in like a trap bar at some point, also minimal footprint in space, I've shown that. Works out great, also with a squat harness. And then as far as programming all this stuff together, we would be here for another maybe 20 minutes, but I will just summarize and say what I like about free weights and bands is that a lot of times, let's say even for lower body exercises, so adjustable dumbbells and even this barbell, yes, it can be cumbersome to say rack a heavier weight, but there's a lot of things you can do, say lunging, uh, front squats, even some hinge patterns with some moderately heavy loads with a bar like this is still gonna be good. What I personally would do is I would use these things in kind of a pre-exhaustive measure. So you could either do bands first or weights first. I personally would do weights first. So you can, well, I would do weights first on the upper body stuff and then maybe go right into a compound set of some resistance band exercise in the same body part. And then the lower body, because your muscles are obviously be stronger and you handle more loads, I would maybe pre-exhaust some with bands and then jump into some sort of weighted exercise with a barbell or adjustable dumbbells. And then just log the information as you normally do, so find some sort of progression system, could be repetitions, could be sets, could just be adding weight in the bar or extra bands, so something like that. And just go that way, because my personal opinion is what I just listed out right here is the ideal one-two punch, where in the past, if you just had something like this, I think you're somewhat limited to what we can do now in some of the complementary exercises and things that just work better with bands. Uh, and vice versa. Bands are great, but there are a lot of things that just are super cumbersome and aren't as good. I'm thinking about things like chest presses. You know, why kind of reinvent the wheel, trying to find some super creative way of using a chest press with resistance bands when just buying a simple pair of adjustable dumbbells, especially maybe a heavier set like a Iron Master, you're pretty much set in the ways you can load that horizontal push. That's it though guys, can make this a very long video. Want to keep this as brief as possible. Any questions, comments, feedback, especially on anything I'm seeing here, any recommendations you guys have, Drop them down below in the comment section and I'll see you guys on the next video.